Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about my new Polonium 210 Alpha source disk that I got from Spectrum Techniques. Let me put this up where you can see it and hold up something here to block the light just a little bit to make it easier to see. I'm in, I, have, I have kind of a bad lighting condition right now. This is not part of my Geiger Counters 101 video series, by the way. This is just me showing you my awesome source disk. The uh, alpha video from my uh, my Geiger Counters 101 video will be coming up in a day or two. In fact, the reason I bought this was for that video, so that you could see a better uh, alpha source than I had. I mean, I have also alpha sources, but I don't have like a source source. I have like um, things that emit alpha. And the problem with them is that they also emit gamma and beta, so it's hard to really show you the difference. With this little guy right here, though. I have a pure, uh, I have pu uh, a nearly pure gam uh, beta source, excuse me, and I can block the uh, uh, beta and have a, a, a gamma source, but I really, really wanted to show you just an alpha source, alpha only. So here it is. It is polonium 210. Polonium 210 is pretty much, um, well, if you take bismuth and you add a neutron, you get this. So, actually, no. I think you'd actually—I think you'd have to actually add a proton to get this. But whatever, who cares? Uh, this little guy right here is emitting alpha particles, which are uh, two protons, two neutrons. So polonium 210, 210 minus four is 206. So you get lead 206. That's the uh, uh, result of this thing decaying. It decays uh, by 50% of what is in this every 138.4 days. So in three years, whatever was in here will be below 1% of what it originally was. So I'll need to get a new one in three years. Isn't that terrible? As you can see, I'm trying to block the light here. My lighting is actually a problem right now because it's almost kind of maybe a little too bright, which is kind of ironic. It usually is too dark. So basically put, this is from Spectrum Techniques, Caution Radioactive Material. 0 0.1 micro Curie source. So this is one tenth of one micro Curie. That means 3,700 disintegrations per second. Now one disintegration per second is one becquerel. So 3,700 becquerels is the specific activity of this sample. All right. 3,700 times 60 seconds should be 222,000 counts per minute, give or take. Now this thing right here, I don't know the efficiency of it at detecting this. It produce, This produces a 5.4 million electron volt alpha particle. I know americium produces a 5.1 like or 5.2, I think, million electron volt um, particle of alpha, and I have a 30% a detection rate on it. My efficiency is about 30% for americium-241, so my assumption is the polonium should be similar. I'm only going to get one half of it at a time, and then of course there's the uh, the efficiency, and then there's the uh, uh, four pi geometry, meaning how far away I am from it. It's the same amount of energy uh, divided into the area of a circle. It's actually it should be more than an area. It should actually be a uh, 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 like a sphere uh, with a thickness to it, actually. But regardless, we're not going to get that deep into math. In fact, we're not really going to do any math. Let's see what we get. Now, as you can see, I am just happily touching this because I don't care. The reason why? Because unlike gamma and alpha, I know that I'm not going to pick up much of anything. Let's turn up the sound. This sound right here may not actually sound good. I might want to switch to a different one afterwards. Here it is. It's a little speaker. It plugs into the Geiger counter. Now, pull the cap off my Geiger counter. Now, we're not going to touch this to this, but we're going to get it really close. Nothing. Why? Because even the yellow on the back of this is enough to block it. You see that? That right there is where the actual... That silver in there is what has the actual amor um, I keep saying americium. <laughs> the actual polonium 210. Now, whoa! Hey, you know what? Let's cut this off. I don't think this sounds very good. I don't like the sound of this. Let's move it away. 
It's good when you have low radioactive stuff, but high radioactive stuff like this, maybe not so good. Let's turn on the sounder. And let's let the drop sounder drop back down again. Not the sounder, the Geiger counter. I've had a long day at work. I don't shoot my videos when I'm this tired. There we go. When you give it a really high reading, it takes it a time to drop back down again. Okay, big pancake Geiger Miller tube. Slowly I approach. There we go. You get the idea. All right. Now, let's see how high we can get if I put the Geiger counter really close to it, but without touching it. All right? Really, really, really close. I have to get down on the floor so I can look really carefully and make sure. Let's see what we get. All right, that's about as close as I can get it without touching it. Let's see what we get. 24,000 counts per minute. 24, 25, something like that. That's as close as I can get it without touching. Closer, farther. Closer, farther. Now, for the famous test of the paper, it has to be done. It is almost against the rules to show an alpha producer without showing the whole paper deal. How does the paper deal work? Well, you take a piece of paper and you stick it in between the alpha and the Geiger counter and you demonstrate how it completely goes away. Now, let's cover up my personal information from this. And I will show you that this is my SE International Certificate of Conformance for my Geiger counter stating when it was like, you know, put into service and everything about it. That's funny. I'm sure the SE people wouldn't mind this at all. But let me keep it so you can't see my name or anything. We don't need that. Actually, you probably already know my name, but you don't need to know like my address. That would be fine with me. Put the paper in. Wow. Oops. Knocked over the source of the paper. The reason this happens is because the paper can actually block most of the alpha. Alpha is not very good at making it through things, even like paper, because it's it's very positively charged, having a positive electrical charge of two. The reason being is it's two protons, two neutrons. And you know neutrons have a, a negative one-third, negative one-third, positive two-thirds quark electromag uh, electrical alignment, so they have, um, or electrical charge, rather, so they have a zero electrical charge, whereas protons have plus two, plus two, negative one, or sorry, pl plus two over three, plus two over three, Ne plus negative 1 over 3. So that means that protons have a positive 1 electrical charge and 2 protons plus 2 neutrons equals a positive charge of 2. That's how that works. Now, I tested this just a little while ago to see. Let's see what coffee filter paper does to it. You might find this interesting. Coffee filter paper is much thinner than other papers. Let's see if it works. There, you might even be able to see the source disk through the paper. Not actually touching it, but it's pretty close. And as you can see, it is getting through the paper because there's too many holes in coffee filter paper. Last but not least on my list of amusing things to look at today, I wanted to look at, uh, let's see, where is, where did I put my mica source, mica piece. Last thing I wanted to show you was mica. This thing has a thin mica window. Here's a piece of real mica. I wonder if it works. Obviously, we get a reading. Let's put the mica over it and see if the mica blocks the reading. It shouldn't because this thing has mica over it. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
Probably not. There's the mica. My god, I can barely see it with my eyes. Did you see it at all? See the mica? Maybe, hopefully. Then I'll take more 40 feet in. Interesting. The mica stops it. I have to wonder how thin the mica on this must be. This little thin sheet of mica is enough. So I'm going to pull the mica away. It goes crazy. Very, very strange. Oops, bump the camera thing. Let's pull this off, cut it off, and see what that is in counts per second. Le système international. Counts per second. Alright. Very close, but not touching. Wow. 428. Now, of course, the micro sieverts make no difference whatsoever because, remember, without knowing the energy, you cannot know the, the amount of energy this produces. The re reading would actually be much higher, most likely, because of the fact that um, this thing produces a massively, massively more uh, a, in, a more energetic particle than what you would get from a cesium-137 anyway. But because people like to see it, I'll show you anyway. There you go. But of course, remember, that doesn't mean anything. I'm just showing that for fun, because without knowing the energy, that means nothing. And last but not least, we should cut this to timer, and uh, to totaler, and see how what it happens. It's now just counting the number of uh, reactions I get. Creepy. Anyhow, so this has been Tom from anti-proton.com with an amor uh, americium. Why do I keep saying that? With a polonium 210 disc, which is slowly turning to lead in my hand, turning to lead to uh, 206 in my very hand. Bye bye.